Morning guys, beautiful morning it is. Here we are on uh, one of Anglian Water's um, reservoirs. This is Graffham Water. And today we're gonna do a bit of a video on uh, how I personally tackle these sort of waters. Um, be fantastic for, for people that haven't really experienced this type of fishing before. Um, hopefully we can catch a few fish along the way. Primarily we'll be, um, we'll be casting, maybe do a little bit of vertical jigging, but pike, perch, zander, and fingers crossed uh, we can put a few fish in the boat as well as teaching you a couple of bits along the way. So as I've said, we're here this morning on Graffham Water. Um, for those of you that have never experienced this type of boat fishing, it's a vast expanse of water. Uh, there's a few little things you need to sort of um, take on board and take note. First being good quality waterproofs and, um, and warm clothing. It might look beautiful now, but it can change very, very quickly. Um, quite often on these sort of waters, you can actually get more water in the boat and on yourself through waves than you do through the rain. So um, always bring them, even if it's not forecast. Um, life jackets, very, very important. The staff won't let you out on the pontoons without one, um, but it is absolutely essential. If you've got your own, just make sure that it's checked regularly, that it does work. Um, really, that's all your basics. Obviously, you need your fishing kit. We've got some other bits on board today, um, being the fish finder. It's not essential, but it does help. We also have an electric motor, which again, not essential, but it does help. Um, when first coming out on these sort of waters, if you haven't approached it before, your first port of call is to speak to the rangers. Um, they're here every day. They see anglers every day. They see the trout anglers. They see predator anglers. Um, they see the water themselves. They know where the fish are. They know where the fish are feeding. Um, so we're always, always, always trying to get some information from them. Once we're sort of beyond that bit and we move on to the water, we've got to look for some sort of features really. Um, here on Grafham, there's two very distinct features, being the two towers. Um, we'll approach this today as if, um, you know, we're new to the water. So being directly opposite the jetties is the most prominent feature, which is the first tower. So uh, that's where we're headed to this morning and we're going to um, have a look at different ways of approaching that feature. Let's see if we can catch a fish or two. So we've made our way across the reservoir. Uh, you can probably see in the background to, um, to our first main feature, which is, uh, which is the pumping tower. Um, if you've never fished these before, obviously it's just a feature. So you can approach it like your normal fishing, drop shot, jigging, casting. Um, for me, I always like to start big, work my way down if I'm not getting bites. So um, a good favorite to get started is the Xander Pro. This is 12 centimeters, um, 15 gram jig head, 12, 13 pound fluoro, perfect for the job. Um, we're in 26 foot of water currently, so um, that'd be just about nice. Particularly as we've got very little wind today, um, so we should be able to present baits up to the up to the tower quite nicely. We'll start off with the soft plastics. Um, if we don't succeed, we'll go slightly smaller, perhaps to a slick shad, slightly less um, less smaller body profile, and then as the as the day warms up slightly, we'll switch over to some crank baits and um, just see what they want. So we've um, read 10 or 15 minutes just casting a, a big jig about Xander Pro. Um, no bites, no inquiries, no nothing really yet. Um, might be a bit early in the day for it, but we've seen a couple of fish caught up in the water, people fishing drop shot quite high off the bottom. Um, so we're just going to run a couple of crankbaits past the tower and see if there's any fish feeding a bit higher up in the water. This is a um, 6.5 rattling hornet. It get down to about 15 foot on the right tackle, crank down hard. We're still in 25, 26 foot, so we're gonna be 10 foot off the deck. So it's not like we're trying to target fish that are hard on the bottom at the moment. Um, they might still be down there. We might be attacking it too early with this, this style, but um, with these sort of features, just to try everything out. If you're not getting a bite, there's resident fish there. So, um, you know, just see what it is that's gonna trigger them. So 
So on um, a lot of my my crank baits, as much as I know what they are and I know how deep they're going to fish, etc. When you've got boxes and boxes and boxes full, um, it's very easy to forget what depth these these are going to run at. Um, so a little thing that I do is I mark the front with the minimum expected casting depth and I mark the back with the expected um, trolling depth and you can expect to achieve somewhere between these two casting with the right setup. So this is in meters, three meters and five meters. Just a little tip that um, is very quick to do, very simple, as soon as you look at a lure in your box, you know exactly where you're gonna be fishing in the water column. So we've um, had a bit of a dabble up on the tower uh, there was a few fish being caught around us, but on very small drop shot gear and stuff. Uh, just don't feel that they were um, really on the feed yet. We'll certainly pop back there later. It's a feature that can't be ignored. Um, we've just moved up the lake a little bit here. We went over with the finder. There was a little pod of fish, which I'm hoping were perch. Uh, there's not really many bait fish around. You might be able to see on the camera, but there's a hell of a lot of trout anglers around here. So um, there's a lot of trout in here. They're normally either following the, the massive shoals of shrimp that are in here or the bait fish um, in which case the predators shouldn't be that far behind them but again we won't give it long it's one of them sort of waters if the fish are there and feeding you'll normally get a, um, a response pretty quick if they're not keep on the move until you find um, either some feeding fish or some decent bait fish or move on to the next feature and um, that's part of what today is really is to go about and show you the different features that there is to fish to and uh, and hopefully how you fish how you fish those features so we're still just uh, just power fishing really we've got um 15 gram jigger 12 centimeters and a pro one of my favorite um baits for for these big waters I'm fishing quite fast, a couple of fast turns, letting it fall back to the bottom. I'm just trying to search out areas um, quickly instead of spending lots of time in one place. Use a bigger jig head to allow us to fish a bit faster, cover the water faster, move on to the next area. We've had a few hours fishing already this morning. Um, went straight to the tower. Uh, didn't really get a lot there. I think it's too early in the day. We'll go back there later. Um, then we came up and fished more of a, a bay with um, quite a steep shelf on it. Unfortunately, there's a few too many trout anglers about at the moment, so we can't really get in close enough to where we, we want to be for the perch fishing. Um, you've probably just seen on the finder, which you can see again now, masses and masses of fish here out on the left-hand side. Um, we've just stopped here, had a few casts. If I'm honest, we've had a few little not inquiries but little uh, indications on the on the line and i think these are a big shoal a big bream so um, instead of wasting time sat here then we'll go and find some deeper water and perhaps have a little dabble for some xander um, come back to this area later certainly the bream do um, you know do draw in the the big pike the perch are always local and um, some of the big xander will come in and um, be feeding on the, on the smaller fish as well so um, it's just a, a point really that Yes, we rely on our fish finders, but you also need to be able to determine what you're seeing on the screen properly. So yes, this is showing up fish. I know it doesn't have it written on there what fish it is, but personally, they're far too big on the, on the sounder to be, um, to be perched. So I think we'll leave these alone and we're going to have a look for some deeper water. They're not all big monsters at Grafham. There's still a few, uh, plenty of small ones about. That one, getting a um, slick shad, 20 grams. Um, you might be out of here in the background. There's water being pumped into the reservoir at the moment. Um, I fished here for a couple of years and I've never actually been up and seen this water coming in. So for me, this is exactly like for yourselves, a brand new feature for me to fish to today. Um, as we've come around on the fish finder, there's a lot of fish about, but there's also a lot of disturbance. There's some seagulls um, diving on the boil, so I assume that there's lots of debris and little bits of food, particles coming up. Uh, it's probably a bit more of a watercraft craft moment, really. It's a, a, a feature that definitely needs exploring. Had a couple of casts straight away with um, sort of 15 grams, I think with the turbulence of the water and the fact we're in 40 foot of water 
just wasn't getting down. So I've gone to 20 grams, add a fish straight away. I'll have another cast or two, and then I'm going to go up to probably 25 or 30 grams, try and get down in that kill zone a bit quicker, and uh, hopefully see if we can catch a Xander or two off here. It feels, um, feels promising. So we've been sat here on the edge of this boil for a little while. Probably see on the finder, there's fish everywhere. Um, we've had lots and lots and lots of small perch. So we've dropped over to a drop shot um, just to try, whoa my days, that's not a small perch. See what we can get. And we've just got ourselves a pretty much a double figure zander. <laughs> on a tiny, tiny, tiny little slick shad on a drop shot. Um, as you can see, there's fish everywhere down here, so we've persevered. I must admit, we've been, um, been a bit tiddler bashing. But now, here we go. There she is, the little tiddler fat, uh, the little slick shad, just in the corner of the mouth there. Just say that. Now that that line's out the way, let's just get that hook out. That's what we come to graphing for. So you might have lots and lots of small fish under the boat. Um, I would think without weighing it, it's probably eight pounds plus. Um, got to be getting on, let's have a quick measure. I would think it's getting on for 70 plus centimeters. Yeah, 77. So um, almost certainly close to a double, if not a double. There we go. And one tip I would say is we don't like to keep these fish out of water very long. They've come up from, um, from a deep, deep, deep water. So we want to send them straight back. By spearing them down head first, that gives them a bit of a head start. If they have got any gas in the body that's um, you know built up while the fish have been out of the water, gives them a good head start to get back. Um, there's no signs of any barrel trauma with it, so happy days. Catching plenty of these little monsters at the moment, and um, the interesting thing is fish of that size a coughing up baby zander that size so um, I'll put this little chap back but that interests me in the fact that they might be feeding on slightly smaller baits so I've been um, throwing about quite big baits so maybe it's time to scale down and get back on what the zander had the small baits um, probably get back on the drop shot and see if we can um, winkle a couple more So um, a lot of the fish have been coughing up those little baby zander as I showed you. So we've got dropped right down to um, small slick shads on a drop shot. Uh, it's not something I would normally fish on here, but it's one of them times fishing a jig just seems to be a bit too fast. Um, this seems to be picking up lots of small perch, some slightly better fish, maybe up to a pound, plus um, the odd zander as you've seen, um, which are you know amazing fish. It's one of those situations where you can't get disheartened on these big waters. There's fish everywhere on the finder. Uh, you're not really getting a lot of pulls. So go through and try lots of different things. So try big lures, big jig heads. You can fish them fast, fish them deep. Try right the way through to small little tiny lures on the finesse stuff. Um, there's generally feeding spells on these waters and that, that 
in between time can really put you off and can break people so you've got to be able to go past that and um, sort of if you're catching small fish at least you're catching fish those bigger fish will come on the feed at some point it's been at the right place at the right time looking at the fish finder this is certainly a feature this boil that um, you would want to be on here at the right place at the right time and i think in a couple of hours time as the light levels start to drop um, there could be a lot of big fish feeding here in which case we'll probably switch back over back up to the jigs get rid of the drop shot and uh, start power fishing again and hopefully try and pick up some big perch or some more big zander Be prepared. That wasn't what I was expected. Just hooked. On the drop shot again. This time, a little wee socks. Just goes to show how many predators are down there and feeding and um, doesn't all have to be big baits. I will be back onto a big bait soon, I'm sure, but um, it's just a prime example of all the predators down there smashing into this sh massive shoulder bait fish. Let's get him back. So another method that we employ on the um, on the reservoirs, particularly in this deep water. Oh, there we go. Successful as we're talking. Um, is a little bit of vertical jigging. This feels like a small perch. Um, Tiny perch, look, but it shows it's working. Um, let's just get him unhooked. To so well us out, it's a simple 20 gram jig head, small slick shad. Um, for this, it's slightly more stepped up. Normally we'd be fishing bigger lures than this, but as you've seen today, they're definitely feeding on a lot smaller fish. Um, this is the Terminator Pro V jig, which is 14 to 35 grams. Um, Brilliant for the job, will no longer be available soon. However, the new Prism range and TI range will fully cover all your vertical fishing. Um, again, the, really one of the most important things is, is the braid. So this is slightly thicker. This is 0.12, uh, which is best part of 20 pound. Um, perfect for vertical fishing for sander and some of the big perch. And obviously, oh, and that's hopefully a sander on the line. No, another little perch. <laughs> so yeah, most important is is the is the braid. This braid is slightly thicker, being at 0.12. Um, with the vertical fishing, you can get away with light braid, but I would also have a few casts with this, so you don't want to be going too too oh, too light, um, losing fish or cracking off on the cast. Um, but for this style of fishing today brilliant nice and light easy to hold all day getting lots of bites while i'm talking to you now um, unfortunately a lot of them are these smaller fish at the moment but i'm sure the bigger fish will come on the feed and i think by employing more of a vertical technique with a slightly bigger bait than the drop shot hopefully we'll sort out some of them better fish what I think is going to turn out to be a pike. If it's a zander, then it's going to be a good one. Um, but either way, we're into the sort of stamper fish that we came here for. It could actually be a big zed. So this was trouble being too many rods in the boat. Oh, 
was a big zed, look, lovely. There we go. So that's the benefits of uh, a bit of drop shot, uh, a bit of vertical fishing. Rolling. So here we have another, oh it's dropped out, big gnarly zander. Probably not quite as heavy as the other one, probably nearly as long, we'll measure it in a minute. Um, this one fell to vertical fist. Stick shad in rough, which I believe is probably the closest to Xander colours down there as possible. Um, but again, as you'll notice, very, very small. They definitely haven't wanted big baits today. The absolute importance of having an unhooking mat. And there we go, another one at 70, 73 centimetres. Lovely big Xander. And um, just goes to show that you need to have um, plenty of different techniques in your armory to you know, come, and, come and tackle these waters because they don't always take the same bait and always take the same, the same technique. Happy days. So we've been up fishing around by this boil for a good few hours this afternoon. We've had three big zander, a pike, loads and loads of perch, uh, no big perch, some on drop shot, some on vertical jigging, a um, few small perch on casting, but um, really we'd like to go and try and catch a big perch. So we'll go back to that original feature, the main feature, which is the tower, and we'll go and have an hour there, um, see if we can find some feeding fish there. Worst case scenario, we'll see if there's any other features that we can show you on our way back to the um, back to put the boats back in. Well, it's turned into a cracking day. Had some great lander, and I think we got a great perch. Well, not yet, but he's on the way. One gnarly old perch. Looks like he's had a run in with Summit in his younger life. Lost part of his fin there. Got a few marks on him. But what a day. A couple of big old Xander and now a big old perch. This one falling to uh, drop shot. But again, the little um, slick shad, tiny little slick shad. I think it's just that they're feeding on, um, feeding hard on small baits. It's not keeping out of the water any longer. Get them back. The fish hooked on the drop shot. Seems that that's the method for the day today. Unorganized with the net yet again. Another cracking perch that. Whoa. Oh, hit me in the net, in the net then Kev. There we go, another beautiful graph and perch. Definitely today, drop shot's the technique. Um, not normally what, what I would choose first hand today, but it just goes to show it's all working. 
Well, what a day. We've caught some fish, um, some big Xander, some big perch, lots of smaller perch. Um, hopefully I've run you through a few, just a few pointers that get you out, or if you want to get out on the water like this, that will just make your life a little bit easier. So obviously safety, warmth and waterproof clothing, good balance kit that's going to stand up to the job all day long. Um, local knowledge, speak to the rangers, find out what's, you know, what's working, where the fish are. If you've got access to it, fish finder, absolutely invaluable, and also electric motor just makes your life easier. Um, all these bits aren't essential, you know, all you need really is a rod reel and some lures, but all these extras do make your life easier. You've probably seen during the day, I've got a whole rack of rods sat here, but I do like to chop and change a lot and uh, it's not essential, but it does just make your life a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. So uh, hopefully a few people have learned a few things and uh, good luck.